All right, what is going on? We're just waiting on concrete here. Last load of this uh, raised up house foundation. Some kind of cool, some kind of different. I'm not sure if it was a heritage home or if they're doing this for uh, square footage reasons. Sometimes they maintain the old structure as such that if they were to build a new one, they wouldn't get the same square footage on the same lot, yada, yada, yada. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's get to why we're really here. We're here to talk about Dunnage. I thought this was the perfect little site because the ground here is absolute spongy crapola. So what we're gonna do here, and I had a previous video on this where I touched on this probably a year ago now, but it's such a important and I think uh, overlooked topic. We're gonna dedicate this entire little video to Dunnage. This is a tribute to Dunnage. I even brought my notepad here to do some math. It's actually the, the Bigfoot calendar, but it doubles up as a notepad. Very handy to keep in the truck. So, what we got here is, we got an outrigger, obviously. We have an outrigger load. Let's just round it up. 43,500 pounds is the fully loaded weight on this outrigger with a boom stretched right over top of it. So what we're gonna do here, once I grab a tape measure, which I forgot, let me grab that out of the cab of the truck. Be right back. Not just any tape measure, a genuine Bootsmeister tape measure. So let's do some measurements here. Let's start with, for example, because I hear a lot of guys talking about setting up on just the 24 by 24 square pad. It's actually a lot more common than it really should be, in my opinion, unless you're working on uh, some seriously firm ground conditions. So we got 24 by 24. Do you get the idea? I take my handy dandy pen here. Let's just set the camera now. 24 times 24 equals 576. So 576 square inches is our surface area of our dunnage. So that's our dunnage. Five, seven, six. Our outrigger load. Here's a picture of an outrigger. There it is. Our outrigger load, we round it up to 45,000 pounds. We're gonna take square inches and outrigger load. So we'll do outrigger load first, 45, one, two, three, divided by five, seven, six, equals 78. 78 PSI. Using just that square pad, 78 PSI of ground pressure. Now, if we wanna go off of the uh, Putzmeister chart here, undisturbed soil, 14 PSI. So that is the acceptable pressure on undisturbed soil will be 14 PSI. With just this square pad here, we're making 78 PSI. As you can see, that far, far, far exceeds the allowable ground pressure for these ground conditions. So we're gonna go a little further here. Hello, friend. Got my buddy over here, checking out what's going on. Let's measure what we've done here with this larger dunnage. got 56 inches we'll call it 54 because there's a couple gaps there by five feet so we'll call it 60 by 54 let's punch this into our phone my calculator app opened up here 60 inches by 54 inches equals 3,240 square inches. Three, two, four, zero. And we got that same 45,000 pounds. So outrigger load, 45, one, two, three, divided by three, two, four, zero, equals 13.8. So with what we've done built here with this pad, 
we've taken our ground pressure from 78 PSI down to 13.8 PSI. So we re reduced our ground pressure here by a huge, huge margin. And that gets us within our 14 PSI of the undisturbed soil rating. Um, I know on, I believe it's the ACPA chart, uh, virgin soils actually, they have a rating of 22 PSI. But I would prefer and recommend just go off of whatever your manufacturer has affixed to their outrigger. So anyhow, as you can imagine, what's actually required to keep your machine up and what is often used are two very, very different things. Okay, so to summarize here, we have our outrigger load, 43,000 and change. We have our dunnage pad area, length times width, which in this case came up to a little over 3,200 square inches. We took the outrigger load number, divided it by the square inches of, uh, of dunnage pad area. And what we came up with is the pressure exerted on the ground by that dunnage pad, which was 13.8 PSI, versus if we just used a little square pad, it would have been close to 80 PSI. Just for reference, if we were to just use these two pads here, which is a 48 by 36, that would come in at right around 23 PSI and change. These two pads here, under that top pad there, for this size pump, 36 to 40 meter range is actually sufficient for uh, most ground conditions but because it is so extra super crappy here today we went a little bit extra and we put those three big boys on the bottom there so whether you want to crib it in wooden timber composite pads whatever it may be just get that surface area and uh, whatever it may be does not include two by fours two by fours are not damaged two by fours are scrap lumber so four by six or bigger timbers is what I always say. So anyhow, so just gonna wrap this one up here. Believe it or not, they actually reached all the way over the roof and uh, yeah, no line required, imagine that. So anyhow, just wanted to make another video on this because I do think it is super, super important and quite often overlooked in the industry. So this is how we do it. Uh, if you have any comments, constructive criticism, please contribute in the comments section below. Always like to hear input from, uh, from other pumpers out there in various parts of the globe. But yeah, this is what we do. Once again, dunnage, go big or go home. Like, share, subscribe, times three, over and out.